You know, we love stories and we're always looking for a story. There's times where things line up, where just existence itself starts to become poetic. Some people call it synchronicity, right? I think that's what Carl Jung called it, was synchronicity. Before we really get into this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you get notified about new videos like this one. Knowing that in the next day or two, we will be sailing the 45 miles to Skyros. We come into what is basically a lake. There's a tiny mouth and then it opens up and pretty much in any weather, it's going to be flat in this bay. It was serene. I mean, there's nobody around. We're the only boat there. I believe it's in the story that the meaning is found. There's a reason that we're so, you know, you could say addicted to stories. And I don't think it's an addiction. I think it's a necessity. I think we need them. You have to be telling some sort of story. That's what has allowed humanity to get to the point that it is, is that we can share myths, right? We can have a collective story that we all agree on and that we all act on. Slowly, slowly, is that, as is the Greek way. It's through the lens of story that we learn lessons. It's only through reflection on an event that you can really piece the whole story together and learn the lesson from it. While you're in it, you're just living it and you have to take it as it is. And we attribute story to everything. This whole place looks a bit abandoned. So we find this goat trail and we start walking and Less than five minutes in, I look to my right, and there's a rotting corpse of a goat. You know, with the abandoned feel of the beach, now a dead goat, a little bit eerie of a feel. Sometimes we end up attributing meaning to something that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Maybe it's just a piece of the chaos. Because consciousness is centered around ourselves, we do find ourselves to be the center of the universe. Sometimes you come into contact with pieces of another story and you attribute meaning to it within your story when in reality it's just a piece of a different puzzle that just happens to be in the frame. As an artist, as somebody that is quite mentally inclined to romanticize things and look for the story and everything and think of life as a movie or some, you know, majestic novel and attribute meaning to absolutely everything, having that tendency, I also find it incredibly helpful to have a good amount of skepticism and cynicism so that you can, like, balance it out because if you do get sucked into seeing everything as an omen, then you can end up lost in this delusion. Oh, landscape has changed quite a bit. If I would have looked at the death on the island and the heavy weather coming up as a bad omen, you know, the universe is saying, don't sail right now, we should wait it out. We would have had to turn on the engine and motor the whole way to Skyros. Time to warm up, relax, eat some food, and rest up for a big sail tomorrow. Tomorrow we're doing 40 nautical miles and approximately anywhere between 20 and 30 knots of wind from here to Skyros. So that'll be a big day. As you can hear by the wind, it's a bit windy out and it is rainy out as well. So, heavy weather sailing. Coming at you fast from sailing vessel, Ariane Rod. Let's go. We got everything prepared. Got jack lines, life jackets, all that kind of stuff set up. Engine is warming up and then we will head out. The rain is starting to pick up. This is the only weather window that we'll have to sail the whole way to Skyros. It is heavy weather, but it's kind of our only option. Motoring through the channel, we're gonna be going directly into the wind, perfectly into the wind through the channel. And so my thought is, this could be tricky. If something were to happen with the engine, we would have to turn 180 degrees to come back down. And we might not have enough space to maneuver that. 
Now, the wind is so strong. We're going directly into the wind and the waves are coming directly into us. Since it's a channel, all of that water is now getting funneled into the bay. It's speeding up. The wind is getting funneled between the mountains, so it's speeding up as well. So we're in the strongest current and wind that we can kind of be in around this island. We're going dead into it, one knot. Under full throttle under calm conditions, we'll go seven knots. We're doing one knot, sometimes under a knot. It's just that strong. We have made it out far enough that now we can motor sail on a port tack. So the wind is coming over the port side of the boat. We get a little bit of speed and now we're moving two, maybe three knots. We kind of have to motor sail a little bit, then go into the wind, motor sail. And I'm just trying to move us away from the shore so that if something were to go wrong, we would have more time to figure something out. What is it that you actually pay attention to? And that all comes down to your values and where you're trying to go because you can get easily get sucked into the chaos. We're in the lee of the island just north of Kirapaniya, so the water smooths out. Sometimes things that look like a bad omen end up being nothing. In other times, they end up being hurdles. In other times, they are bad omens. But you can only really figure any of that out after the fact. And you have to go with your gut. You can't go with what other people are telling you. You have to go with what your gut is telling you. It was a rough sail. Tara was seasick almost the whole time. I manned the helm for five, five and a half hours straight. I threw up that sail. Autopilot was not holding at the time. I did not know why. I thought it was just too much weather for the auto helm. What it was in reality was the sails were not balanced. That was one of the things with how difficult it was to learn how to be skipper in the whole first year and a half of sailing. I didn't actually get to learn a whole lot about the technique of sailing. I was learning everything else that sailing is encompassed by. But now I've been learning a lot about the fine tuning of sailing. As they say, hindsight is 2020, and you you know you don't know what you don't know. It's never when everything goes right that you learn things. It's when things go wrong that you learn things. You can learn without things going wrong, but you need to know somebody that things have gone wrong for. Somebody in history has got to go through the problems in order to learn them. And unfortunately for me, <laughs> I have to go through a lot of the problems for me to learn them. You could look at everything that we saw in Kirapanaya and be like bad omen or just a reflection of what reality is. Maybe it's more an omen of don't stay on Kirapanaya because all that is here is eventual death and what you actually need is society and community. Maybe that's more the message that was portrayed in the moment or maybe it's just what nature is actually like which is death and destruction alongside the beauty of growth and creation. I've made loads of mistakes in my life, lots of them. I don't think that doing that sail was a mistake. We made it safely and it was the window. Then the next day, the whole island was having a feast and it was right there, like it was on the dock. A celebration of St. Nicholas. And St. Nicholas is the patron saint of sailors. And we thought, well, isn't that poetic? The patron saint of sailors. There's times in life in which you're in harmony and it's poetic. Maybe everything around you looks like this is a bad idea, but there's something in your gut saying, no, this is the right thing to do. You have to do it because all those obstacles could just be an obstacle to refine you and to make sure that you're the real deal and you're the one that's going to make it to that goal and to weed out all the fakers, to show to yourself that that is your actual values. <laughs>